All right, I think we're ready to go. So our standard housekeeping question or information for those that are new to the webinar. Um, so we are recording this. Um, we will have this available in a few days so you can share at will. We'll have a link on all of our social media and website in the coming days. Um, so for this webinar, if you have questions, please use the Q&A. People are using the chat right now to talk with each other. Um, but if you have a question um, about anything, please put that in the Q&A and you can get that to us. And I'll do my best to answer those by the end of the presentation. So as per usual, we have great, great sponsors in our From the Field series. This particular webinar is co-sponsored by Maggie and Bob Honig and Tom and Karen Scheidt. And they are longtime supporters of us. We, that is so fantastic. And they have seen every From the Field. I would like to know in the chat if anybody else has seen every single From the Field webinar. That's fantastic. Thank you very much to you. Um, if you would like to sponsor one of our webinars, please contact Kate Fitzwilliams at that phone number or kate at savingcranes.org. We love our sponsors. Thank you so much. So today we have a really, really special, special webinar. Um, we are highlighting the International Crane Foundation and Endangered Wildlife Trust partnership. Um, for those of you that don't know either um, or one of those great conservation organizations. We're gonna start off with a little introductory video for you. So you can see how we have our, um, how they started our and our shared history, um, and then go into some great discussions with some of our staff. So let's begin.
Good evening, everybody. Uh, good afternoon to those who are in the daylight side of the world. Uh, my name is CZ Modise. I'm the head of marketing for the Endangered Wildlife Trust. And um, I hope I can say for all of us that that video was uh, so emotionally warming. Um, just watching the images uh, just warmed me up and it's a bit cold in South Africa. So that was a good one. Thank you very much, Hannah, for putting it together. Um, I joined the EWT in October last year. So for me, this is something that I'm super excited to be part of, uh, celebrating 50 years on both the um, EWT and ICF side and 30 years in their partnership. So these are two incredible milestones. So number one, happy birthday to both the EWT and ICF for 50 years. And um, congratulations on this incredible partnership in doing what you both do best, which is conservation. Um, this dream come true for me, by the way. I have never wanted to work with an organization as much as the EWT, and I ended up doing it. Um, so very happy about that. Um, I wanted to share something with you that I think resonates for all of us with regard to conservation and the work that both organizations do. And conservation is about our natural heritage, our natural resources, our culture, and our livelihoods. It's about food and water and air. It's about our hearts and souls being grounded to our one earth, being passionate and compassionate and recognizing the common good and being fair and just. This is the true essence of who we are as an organization, both the EWT and ICF included, we are, we are not only fighting for species and their habitats, but for fundamental human rights to an environment that is not harmful to one, one's health and well-being. I can truly say in the few months that I've been with uh, working with both organizations that this is, this is the heart of what um, the ICF and EWT are about. Um, and I'd like to open the floor to all the panelists to open to introduce themselves. Um, I'm very, very excited about uh, the journey tonight. I am going to learn as much as all of you. Um, so Rich, good evening and good afternoon and over to you. All right, thanks. Greetings everyone and thanks CZ. It's, I just love that we're doing this webinar and, and just the fact that we are both celebrating 50 years, uh, 50 year anniversaries in the same year is just, a wonderful coincidence and, and a great reflection on how integrated these organizations have been. So again, my name is Rich Balthus. I'm president and CEO of the International Crane Foundation. I'm assuming most people know us and know our mission. We work worldwide to save cranes and the ecosystems and broader watersheds and flyways they depend on. I guess the two things I would say that are most important to know about us, one is uh, we work for saving endangered cranes and Many of the world's cranes are endangered, including the four species in Africa where we focus together. Um, and also we work through the charisma of cranes, the wonderful iconic nature of cranes and their cultural connections to do good things for the land, to engage communities in conservation and to work together uh, for saving some really wonderful places. That's our, our mission together. I am uh, the long timer on this group, I guess now I've been with ICF since since the 80s, actually, as a graduate student, but in 1992, I joined staff full time and was at from that time forward responsible for developing our Africa program. And I'll talk about that long relationship with ED, EWT in a minute. But I, I've served since that time and I've been um, president and CEO of the Crane Foundation since 2010. Let's go over to you, Yolan. Thanks, Rich, and good evening, everyone. I think my camera is giving me a couple of issues, but I think you can still see what I look like, more or less. Um, but yeah, good evening, everyone. And it's uh, it's wonderful to also share this platform with, with yourself, Rich, and your colleagues and, and everybody else from the ICF, as we've said several times, commemorating 50 years for both organizations. That's 100 years in conservation. That's a centenary between the two of us. So an even bigger milestone if you look at it like that. So my name is Yolan Friedman. I'm the Chief Executive of the Endangered Wildlife Trust. We don't have presidents in South Africa in any form or fashion. So I only have one title. And uh, it is it has been my pleasure to, to spearhead the EWT's work for I think 17 years now 
And um, the EWT works along across a variety of species and ecosystems throughout Southern Africa. We work in exactly the same way as the ICF does. So our focus is very much on conserving threatened species and ecosystems in the same sort of fashion. So that's everything from policy and advocacy work to community to research, monitoring, hands-on field work, etc., which makes us such good partners and allies in, in conservation. But our focus is more broad in terms of the species we focus on. We 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 cover several plants. We obviously cover a wide diversity of birds, mammals, um, and in recent years, we've also taken on amphibians, reptiles, and, and quite a wide diversity of species. Equally, we work across a diversity of, of habitats that takes us from the mountainous areas of South Africa to wetlands, uh, catchment areas, grasslands, savannas, forests, etc. And throughout Southern Africa, as you will hear from several of our colleagues working in other Southern African countries. And then third, but never least, of course, is our focus on people and uh, the involvement of people in the environment, as Sizi also said, conservation includes culture and humanity. And we focus on that through our third pillar of our strategy, which is people and conservation. So uh, we very, very strongly align to the ICF and how we go about it, just with a slightly broader focus than only cranes wherever we work through the Southern African subregion. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, great to see everybody online and such a great turnout to today from both ICF and EWT side. Um, I'm Karen Morrison. I am the first person who truly straddles the, the partnership between ICF and EWT as VP International, Director of Africa for the International Crane Foundation, and as the Head of Africa Conservation for the Endangered Wildlife Trust. So my career in cranes really started in 1995 when I was employed by the EWT as um, to do my master's on cranes in the Dahlstrom area um, in South Africa. And I had, no doubt, I, I had no idea that 30 years later, I would still be working on cranes and that my career would really have developed around cranes. Um, and here I am still 30 years, years later, as excited um, with the work that we're doing now as I was when I did my first day in the field doing my master's in the Stolstrom area. And I think from, from my side, um, my touch points with ICF have been numerous over, over the years, starting really in the, in the beginning phases when I met up with George Archibald, who brought um, VIP trips to South Africa. So I met up with him and his, his groups on several occasions. And then in the early 2000s, working with Rich on the aerial surveys um, in, in Zambia and joining him on those, and with many of the workshops that we had in those earlier years with the African Wattle Crane program that Rich will chat a little bit more about just now. So it really was um, a great opportunity and an opening then for me to come on board um, to oversee the ICF EWT partnership in 2005. And I think the one question people very often ask is why cranes and what brought me to cranes? And to be honest with you, when I was studying, I I had no interest in birds whatsoever, but um, I was given the opportunity to work with cranes and it ticked so many boxes of the conservation issues that were so close and dear to my heart um, and still stay, stay strong now. And I've really become incredibly passionate about cranes and love birds at the same time. But I think the key thing with cranes is that they people can identify them easily. They're recognizable. Um, they are incredibly charismatic and um, are an incredible flagship species for grasslands and wetlands and so many other conservation issues outside of protected areas um, and inside in some cases that, um, that we, we, we can really use cranes as a, as a flagship for so many conservation issues, which makes our work really diverse, exciting and different every single day. Um, and I think one thing, you know, Cezy touched on it earlier, and I think Yolan touched on it as well. One of the key passions for me about crane conservation is that link between cranes and people. And it's about finding the balance about how do we keep cranes on the, the same landscape where people too can benefit. Um, and that's really what it's all about. So that's, that's my history and my start. Adelbert. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Adar Bataidum Chungzi. I'm the East African Regional Manager for the Endangered Wildlife Trust International Crane Foundation Partnership. I'm based up in, uh, in Uganda where our regional office is, but I work across the East African uh, region. Uh, I joined uh, the partnership in 2017 
uh, after you know having worked in uh, universities in secondary schools, but um, I was inspired uh, to work for cranes um, right from when I was a child. You know, at the age of four, um, my late father called me and said, Darbert, your big brother who has been looking after cows is going to start school. And from tomorrow, you are taking up the responsibility of bringing cows home every morning for your big brothers to milk. And you must bring them on time for them to milk and go to school uh, on time. You should not fail at any one moment. Uh, so at that time, at the age of five, I didn't know how to read the clock. I didn't have one. So I started wondering uh, how I was going to really uh, meet that assignment and my father's expectation. So when I was in brooding thoughts, it rang in my mind that Crane is actually make a call at 6 a.m. And that's the time he wanted me to bring up uh, the cows down for milking. So I was like, wait a minute. I think cranes are going to wake me up. So uh, indeed, they, they never failed me. The following day at 6, I had a call. I knew it was 6. I went up to the car. I brought the cows home. And this continued. Uh, for many years, actually, until I was ready to, to also start school. And uh, so I kept on saying, what will I ever do for these cranes that dearly saved me from my father's canes? He was a tough uh, head, head teacher, so he was good at caning, but he never caned me one day because the cranes faithfully woke me up. And so when I hoped that, um, I was going to end my turn of office of bringing cows every morning. Then he reminded me that the, the sibling behind me is a girl. And so I would continue bringing the cows even when I, I would start school because uh, that is a job for boys. So I had to extend my turn of office bringing cows home and still cranes did this diary. And uh, I made a commitment that one day I will reward my cranes. But at that time, I didn't know how. Uh, I didn't know what people studied in schools to eventually do what they were doing. But it, I kept it at the back of my mind that one day um, I would work for cranes. And uh, so some, uh, in 2017 then, um, I think I was working for an NGO here in East Africa that was into poverty reduction and very little about conservation. One day I saw an advert and it was uh, that the International Crane Foundation works worldwide to conserve cranes. I didn't read the rest of the stuff. I said, this is where I belong. I applied for that job and I've never gone for an interview and came out confident that the job was mine. Karen here was on the panel. We met physically. Karen, when I got out, I was like, this job must be mine. Indeed, I got it. So that's how I ended up working for Cranes. And uh, from the time I got the job, I knew this was where I was meant to be. That's the commitment I made as a child. And here I am uh, serving Cranes across East Africa. And I'm excited uh, to do this. And I do it and I hope to see our cranes, uh, you know, prosper, the population trends uh, reverse from declining. The crane we are working with here in East Africa is the fastest declining species. And we hope to see this uh, trend reversed and probably be the most increasing species in the world. Yeah, so that's me and cranes. Uh, over to you, Ngape. Thank you, Adalbert. Uh, my name is uh, Mwape Sichilongo. I'm uh, serving the partnership as Southern African Floodplains uh, Regional Manager. And this region covers the major floodplains in Zambia, as well as um, Okavango Delta in um, Botswana and the Zambezi Delta in, um, uh, in Mozambique. But our main focus um, is on the Kafue Flats in Zambia, probably the most important floodplain for the Watwood Crane. Uh, this is my fifth year in the position. 
but uh, I first visited the flats as a schoolboy and part of a school trip, and I remember being fascinated about what I saw there. As I say, the birds, the herds, um, and lots of words came to my mind. And I remember that from that trip, I wrote an essay about the importance of the Kafue Flats, which got first prize in a competition. And I guess uh, that's where it all started. Uh, it's only five years since I've been uh, with the, the partnership. Uh, so I'm the youngest in this group. And uh, the Kafue Flats Restoration Partnership um, is uh, our flagship program uh, for the region, focusing on the wattled crane to reduce threats and to mobilize partners and communities uh, to work uh, towards conserving this very important place. Thanks, Susie. Well, thank you all. It's, uh, I, I, I must say, Adalbert, your, your crane story, who could, who could want a better alarm clock? Um, thank you, everybody, for, for your introductions. Um, my first question I'd like to ask um, is to Rich. Um, you were there when coordinated efforts for crane conservation were initiated across Africa. Um, could you please set the, set the scene for us and describe events that led to the formation of the official partnership between the ICF and the EWT? Um, I think that will give us a nice introduction as to how things came about. Sorry about that. <laughs> Knew that would happen. <laughs> My pleasure, thanks, Susie. Um, Yes, uh, well, this is such a rich partnership. And as I say often, and not just on this webinar, this is really our best and most highly integrated partnership in the world for the International Crane Foundation. And I don't say that lightly, we have a lot, a lot of wonderful partners, but the degree to which we fully integrated everything about this partnership is really wonderful. And it's been a fantastic journey together. As I said, I've been on the journey for 30 years with the partnership. Um, and uh, I want, before I say a couple of things about history, I want to shout out two people who may be out listening uh, today. One is George Archibald, our founder. George has been traveling. I don't know if he's back, but hats off to George. George first introduced me uh, to the EWT and uh, the work in Africa back in 1992. Um, and uh, he made many visits to South Africa in the early days of the program and, uh, and really so when I took things over in 1992, it was very much on the firm grounding of having gotten to know EWT and, and uh, really thought about this work going forward. The other person I wanna shout out if she's out there is Lindy Rodwell or Lindy Van Hassel. Lindy and I worked very closely together for many, many years. She actually first came to ICF as an intern in 1988. Uh, and we worked together uh, for many years as I'll, as I'll talk about here, but uh, I'm really grateful to, to Lindy for all the years that we were able to really develop uh, this program together. Uh, to me, there were a couple of big milestones in our collaboration. The first really big one was a meeting that we organized together and held back in 1993 in Mount Botswana. It was the first Africa-wide Africa crane meeting. And we didn't know exactly how it would go or who would show up, but we had 24 countries represented at that meeting more than a hundred specialists from around the world. And it was just a fantastic uh, time together. And really the whole genesis of our work together came out of that meeting. We had colleagues from Mozambique, many from Zambia, many from Uganda and Kenya. I think Kenya took the prize for having the most participants at that meeting. Uh, for our, our colleagues in South Africa, it was their first time meeting a lot of these colleagues from up North. So it was just a great opportunity to exchange ideas and talk. And so many of the programs that followed uh, really came out of that original meeting. Lindy focused a lot at that time going forward on South Africa and Zimbabwe. And I focused on sort of Zambia and points north, spent a lot of time in Mozambique and up in Uganda and Kenya. And slowly we started sort of developing this thing together, exchanging ideas, but really it was always, uh, kind of side by side, ICF and EWT. And that was wonderful uh, for expertise, for experience, uh, for logistics, for all sorts of things. Um, the other big milestone I would say was in and around 2000, 2001, Karen mentioned this. We started our first true program together, which we called the African Waddled Crane Program. 
And we had representatives from 11 countries in Africa uh, who were doing work on wobbled cranes from Ethiopia on down to South Africa. And we started meeting together every year and just promoting this work together. Uh, as Karen mentioned, we started uh, working together on surveys and research and all, all of this work um, really jointly. And it set the stage for what then became the full partnership, which uh, Karen will talk about in just a moment. But we built up and up, we built lots of joint work. In some cases, we just informed each other what we were doing. And in other cases, we really worked hand in hand on the ground in trying to move forward programs in all these countries. It was a very exciting time to meet all these new colleagues and get things going. And we really uh, got a lot of serious work done, uh, understanding cranes in Africa and, and really uh, getting focused on the conservation issues. So the other milestone I would probably say is when I left ICF for a brief period, I moved over to Gorongosa National Park uh, to work there in Mozambique. And at that point, we fully moved our program to, uh, to South Africa, to EWT, to base it there. Karen took over the leadership and I'll leave, I'll leave that story for Karen to tell, but that was really the other big milestone when Karen came on and fully ran um, this partnership. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I must say um, in doing the research for the 50th anniversary um, for the EWT, I came across boxes and boxes of those old school slides, which we used some of them for the video. And when we were digitizing the slides, the pictures and images, you know, the, the images we saw um, with regard to the crane project and the beginnings, absolutely fascinating, incredible article snippets as well. So, wow, you must have had an incredible journey in the beginning and continuing till now. Um, and yeah, so, so to fuse my question to Karen, um, it must have been incredible for you to have watched this partnership grow steadily. I have seen you in quite a few of those slides, by the way, um, and obviously expand into other countries um, across East Africa over the 30 years. What emotions and thoughts come with such a milestone for you? <laughs> Thanks, Susie. Um, it it's been quite a journey. I think the ICF and EWT signed their first sort of agreement, as Rich said, in 2005, and that's when I took on, on the reins. Very daunting at first. It was a big project with a lot of potential going forward. And it's just been amazing to, to, to see the growth in, in our work across Africa, looking at the four crane species that we focus on across Africa, which is the blue crane, the wattle crane, the gray crown crane, and the black crown crane. And um, really sort of exploring what was really needed for us to um, reverse declines, stabilize populations, um, and ensure the, 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 the future of those four crane species. And I think for me, what has been really exciting is really seeing how we have developed or come, come up with ideas of what success really looks like. What is the impact we really want to have? not only for the crane populations, obviously they are first and foremost, but how can we, we do that and benefit habitats, benefit people, benefit the, the, the broader landscapes. And um, so that for me has been really exciting is coming up with what that impact looks like and what success actually means. And then developing our teams on the ground so that we can achieve that. And I've seen tremendous growth over the, the last almost 30 years of our partner, you know, of our formal partnership in place. Um, and from its, its beginnings in 1993 to now, um, it's just been amazing. We've got an incredible team of people on the ground. Um, and I can honestly say every single one of them is unbelievably passionate. All of them have a single, have an incredible dream and vision, which we all share, which is about securing cranes. And um, it really, really led to um, unbelievable work happening. And I think that for, for, for me has been really exciting. We've got a really good foundation now of a team on, on the ground that is effective, has a good vision, um, and good diversity of skills that we can actually move forward with and grow even further. And I think one thing that, that's really been exciting for me as well is seeing us really develop some of our projects into deeper projects where we know that the only way we're going to have impact is through long-term long -term support in certain areas with a real deepening of the, the strategies that we apply in those, those areas. And to really see us committing to 
at minimum of another 20 years at those sites to so that we can achieve success is really exciting. Um, it's not a dip in and out and hope that we're going to have a make a su success or have success in those projects, but knowing that we've got a long term commitment to truly turning things around um, for the the cranes and the people in those landscapes. And I do also just want to add and finish off by by saying that the the partnership between ICF and EWT has been incredible. Um, you know, when we we formally um, partnered, um, we really came together, and we now have one strategy. Uh, we have one um, budget. We have one fundraising strategy. We have one strategy. We have one communications program or communications approach and it truly is integrated in every level at every level um, which is very exciting as rich said i think it's really it's not just a fantastic partnership for what icf has got and what ewt has but i think it's an example of how partnerships can truly work across the the, the conservation sector and potentially even beyond thanks easy i absolutely agree with you karen and it's amazing to be able to listen to um, to you give testament to the small, small, what I've seen, this fraction, which is, um, you know, and I think in comparison to over the, the 30 years of drop in the ocean, but from October until now, the work that the ICF and EWT partnership um, working for cranes has done, it's been absolutely mind blowing, incredible um, news nuggets, articles, um, events on the ground. It's just, there's always something happening. And I think that momentum just keeps getting bigger with, with, with this partnership. And that's incredible. Um, and with that, I'd like to ask uh, Yolan and, and Rich, both of you, um, in your opinion, what do you think have been the key successes and the greatest challenges the partnership has seen since its establishment in 1993? Because um, with great successes always comes challenges and I think vice versa. Um, but what are they and how, how do you guys, um, how did you guys overcome those? Do you want to jump in first, Yolan? <laughs> no, so, I mean, I think that, I think, you know, the, the, the obvious place to start is just with the word partnership. I mean, what is that? It means so many different things to so many different people. But, you know, having thought about this in preparation for the, the, the seminar, you know, it occurred to me that, you know, human beings seek out partners. It's in our DNA. I mean, if you're biblical, it goes back to Adam and Eve. And if you're an evolutionist, it goes, you know, right back as far as, as, as one can trace human DNA and, and rock paintings and all sorts of other, uh, you know, original forms of art that depict human beings needing to work together and find each other. And, you know, we're not an, uh, a species that likes isolation. So in all forms of life, we are seeking our partners in one way or the other. Uh, you know, from business to personal, et cetera. So it's in our DNA. It's, of course, as you rightly said, though, CZ, it's probably the one thing that human beings fail at the most. It's it's the most complex of all things that human beings will ever try to do. But it's something that I think as long as humanity is on this planet, we, we will always be trying to, to achieve that perfect partnership. Um, and I think that in the case of ICF and EWT, what has really helped is that we're very much aligned in our objectives and the way we go about things. So as I touched on in my introduction, we have a very similar approach um which you know i don't want to repeat what's been said but you know karen talking about long-term uh relationships uh deep diving long-term impact the involvement of humanity uh, and community benefits um, but I think also the other thing that's so, so important in any partnership or relationship is honesty we're very honest with each other when we make mistakes I think we're very honest about the need to learn there have been multiple challenges over the years where we've all had to find our way. South Africa is a very different environment. Uh, you know, all countries are different from each other, but we, we have a, a lot of differences from our other African counterparts as well as, you know, our, our American counterparts. And as much as ICF works in the rest of the world, obviously those are those are the ones that matter to us. And so just because of who we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so in exploring and understanding our differences, we've always been honest about trying to understand where and how we can circumvent them. You know, just the legislation for example in the countries are different and just the approaches to which we might do some of our, our processes and administrative side of the organization um you know and one one could list all those differences but i think there's always been an, a, a a conversation to be had 
uh, common ground to be found um, and honesty in terms of how we navigate that that benefits all organizations. And we've learned an extraordinary amount from ICF over the years, um, you know, just in terms of uh, some of the approaches to different things, uh, and hopefully the learnings are mutual. So I think, you know, one, one can really talk about partnerships for a very long time, but I think that a, a common vision, a common goal, uh, a willingness to listen and learn, um, there's been changes in, in the individuals in the partnership over the years, you know, as Rich mentioned, he, he had a stint where he left and came back. I was not always leading the EWT at the time when it was conceptualized, but um, it's been something that's evolved with all of us. I don't think any of us have ever felt we were stuck in this, that this was something that was agreed to by the people. I think the willingness to continue to engage regardless of what was on paper has always been there. Um, and, you know, bringing it back to a marriage, if you will, I think regardless of pieces of paper or rings, there's always been the commitment to the vows we've made to each other. Um, and I think that that really does make for a, a wonderful golden anniversary of, of the two. So, um, you know, I think, yes, challenges are probably still going to uh, arise in the future. But I think that there is a, an honest intention to really put cranes, conservation in the communities that we all love so much before all of those differences. And I think as long as that's held close to the hearts of both organizations, we'll continue to muddle our way forward. Thanks, Yoel. And well, I guess I would add you know, a few things that I would really highlight in, in the partnership. First, I think uh, knowledge just about cranes across Africa and our ability collectively to work together and really help, uh, help us all understand better the status distribution, threats, challenges with cranes across the continent. And, and hand in hand in that is what I would call inspiration. I think our ability to touch and influence work across the continent, I think more than 40 countries in Africa over the years, probably more than that, have plugged into our network and connected in through this kind of shared ability to, to share an inspiration for cranes and, and knowledge through the networks. I think that's been really vital. And then when I think, I think about our great achievements today, I talk a lot about our model projects and we've done webinars and all of this, but I think, I think those projects capture the essence of the cutting edge work that we're doing together for conservation, just not just for cranes, but in Africa in general. And if you look across these projects, uh, the work that Adalbert and his team are heading up in East Africa around population, health, environment, sustainable livelihoods, I'm sure he'll touch more on that, but this is really important work getting at the livelihoods of communities and their well being as an integral part of conservation. We're also weaving sustainable agriculture and climate smart agriculture into that. All of that through this strong uh, partnership across both, both organizations where we're sharing ideas, uh, we're sharing knowledge and expertise to move forward. Um, I'm very proud of our long-term commitments that we're making, uh, like Mopi will talk about for the Kafui Flats, committing 20 years to getting a place uh, back on its feet by really involving communities at the core of that restoration work, engaging communities in every aspect of the conservation work needed in these places to, to, not, to not only help restore landscapes, but really create the buy-in uh, and support needed from the people who share those lands. Um, and, and down in South Africa as well, our very first project uh, related to uh, carbon offsets fighting climate change through conservation. It's a wonderful project trying to demonstrate how good land use practices can fight climate change and really advance biodiversity and farms. So again, I, I see this partnership and this work as, as cutting edge, not just for cranes, but really for thinking about conservation in Africa. And I'm very proud of that. I think that's something both ICF and EWT should really uh, feel wonderful about. So, so. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Karen, I don't know if you have any milestones and a few successes you'd like to add in there. Goodness, lots of successes, lots of milestones. But I think, um, I think the one thing or two things I want to really bring up is, is the first thing is the, the 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 partnership between ICF and EWT. I think really um, complements um, or, or both organisations complement each other so so much. Although we've got so much in so, so much that we are similar in, and um, it, it's it's. There, there are a lot of similarities, but in terms of complementing each other, ICF really has so many special has the the um, special skills in crane conservation um, and the global perspective, where EWT is really grounded in the African context. And bringing those two together, I think, really complement each other enormously. 
Um, and I think, you know, Rich has touched on some of the, the projects that we, we really have that are so successes. And I just want to say that, that so many of our strategies, it's taken us a number of years to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And we, I've got a lot of stories about what, what didn't work and how we have learned out of those. But we're getting to a point now where we actually have a number of strategies that, that we know work. We have proof of concept, like Rich had spoken, Rich spoke about the, the population health and environment and how we integrate people into our, into our projects. Um, looking at how we um, integrate climate smart agriculture, which is also linked to um, sort of improved agriculture um, in a landscape that reduces the need for communities to go into wetlands, as well as building re resilience in local communities around wetlands. Um, looking at co-management agreements with governments um, in, on the, the, the Kufri Flats in Zambia, we've got a lot of projects now and strategies that I think really are in place now that can really allow us to move strongly towards the impact that we hope to have. We've got a lot of tried and tested 30 years of knowing what works, what doesn't work. And, and we've got a lot of lessons learned, but we, I think we're really moving forward now with a number of, of opportunities and strategies that we know um, have a good um, trajectory for the, the future and helping us to achieve impact. Thank you so much. Um, Adalbert, Mwate, I had great opportunity to hang out with both of you at Conservation Week last year in November, and what an experience. It's just so incredible, amazing personalities. Um, and uh, there is one question that I did not get to ask both of you when we, when we met initially, and that is, um, what made you apply for your job with the African Crane Conservation Partnership? Uh, thanks, uh, Sizi. Um, like I told you earlier, I was um, I loved cranes from childhood. Um, they are great time terrors. And uh, when I looked at uh, the job advert um, put out by ICFEWT in 2017, the, 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 the roles were very challenging. And it, it, you know, it was like, the person going to do this will be hitting their head on the wall. It is going through a wall. It was looking at, first of all, working with the fastest declining species, uh, addressing uh, challenges related to, you know, poverty in communities, looking at wetland encroachment. And I'm a character that likes going through walls. I like challenges. I don't like a responsibility where everything is on the table. So I was like, this is the kind of responsibility I need to take up. Let me um, apply for this. And, and you know, it was all about cranes, people, and wetlands. And I said, this nexus is very good. Having grown up in a, uh, a country, uh, Uganda, where there is very high population growth, people are expanding agriculture into wetlands. And I grew up knowing that cranes breeding wetlands. I saw that as a child and I, I, I was seeing the number declining because if the cranes that use it to wake me up through our house, I think now the, there is only a handful. So I was like, this is something I need to go and work with cranes while at, uh, resolving people's problems as well. So that really inspired me to apply for this job. And when I look at the, the, the far we've gone, it's really amazing. I remember I, I joined when we were working at three, uh, just a few sites in East Africa, you know, about two counties in Kenya. Um, uh, in Rwanda, we were working at three wetlands, but just small on ground, uh, thin on ground. In Uganda, we are in just one corner near the Rwanda, uh, Uganda border. Uh, over the years, we've really expanded to cover a big area and cover more, secure more cranes. Uh, we still have a long way to go though, uh, but at least you can see that we are on track. We are taking the right steps. 
And to me, that really keeps on inspiring me. It gives me the fuel to move on because I'm, I'm, I'm sure we are taking the right direction. And the fact that we've now defined where we want to be, we have all the strategies that we want that will take us to securing cranes and wetlands. So that kind of keeps me going. And it reminds me of the terms of reference that I saw in 2017 that looked like I was going to hit my head on a wall, but I have not met that wall. Maybe it is ahead, but uh, with our strategies, I don't I don't see us meeting a wall. So that keeps me running, uh, Sizi. Uh, thank you. Thank you, amazing. Mwafe? Uh, Sizi, thanks. What Rich and Kareen don't know that when I was taking the interview, I was running late from another meeting and I wasn't going to make it to where I had planned to take the interview and the nearest place was a bar. So, <laughs> so, so I so fortunately was in the middle of the day so there was nobody in the bar and the barman was watching me but he gave me a desk and said uh, uh, go ahead with it. But yeah, I didn't see the advert until very late. So a couple of friends of mine uh, said there was something uh, interesting I should look at because I'd spent 10 years in WWF uh, dealing with community-based natural resource management, protected area policy, advocacy, and um, yeah, environmental legislation and those kinds of things that CZ took me from uh, boardrooms to seminars and to the field with MPs, with community members, with conservationists and after 10 years I thought that when I saw the advert that uh, it was time time uh, to go on the ground and time to focus so in many respects CZ I felt called to the job and my first trip to the flats when I heard that the job included the flats my first trip when I was 14 years old the emotions came back and I just felt that it was time to focus on something that was very clear in terms of the impact we want, but very clear in the complexity. As Adalbert said, it's like trying to run through a war when you think of the challenges we have to deal with. And this opportunity was right uh, in front of me. And I just felt that this was a real, real important opportunity to apply myself and all that I had learned I call myself a career conservationist, having started as a volunteer when I was still a small boy. And this kind of work, which has focus, which is integrated, mimicking the reality of life and addressing uh, things in an integrated way, but very clear where you want to focus and want you, what you want to get out of it was very, very appealing to me. And I really felt called to the job. Thanks, Sizi. Guys, all I can say is the stories. I'm just, I have so many questions that I want to ask. I'm sure our audience wants to ask many questions as well. And I can't hug the, the stage for too long. Um, just looking, I'm keeping tabs of the time. I have many, many other questions, both organized and non-organized. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a lighthearted anecdotal one out to all of you. Um, and then I will um, hand over to Anne so we can see if there are any questions from, from the audience. Um, what are some of, and this is, goes to the entire panel, um, if you could all answer with uh, maybe one or two. Um, what are some of the milestones that have changed the face of crane conservation in Africa, as well as globally after the, over the last 50 years, in your opinion? Um, I uh, thank Sizi. Um, for me, I felt that the partnership gave us the um, provided what I call courage and confidence uh, to take on some challenging work. And in my specific context, it was to broaden the geographical scope and say, in the area that's important for the Watford crane, we will define the program to cover the whole area but then to think about it strongly and say, but in this one place where the vulnerability is much higher, the rates of degradation are higher and there's no one 
focusing on the cranes there. That's what we, where we will focus to do the crane work and make a difference on the ground, in my opinion, culminating then in a 20 year agreement uh, with an integrated approach of five years of negotiation and really to take a deep dive and design a program that addresses the challenges on the ground for me is an important milestone. Z. Yes, I'll um, jump in and say, I, oh, sorry, Albert. Uh, no, I'll jump in here. We go. Uh, but I'd say just to add a quick one. I, I, I think such a big common theme and milestone across the program is the way cranes bring people together. And I think we just demonstrate that time and time again, uh, bringing our leadership across, uh, working with each other across the region, all the work everywhere we work with local communities, local governments, local partners. Um, it's really all about working through these amazing birds to bring people together to do good things, focus on land and water and livelihoods. And that that's, I think, to me, what 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 epitomizes this this partnership and this work. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, one key milestone we've really made this partnership has made is to demonstrate that uh, biodiversity conservation can be used to resolve people's problems and challenges. Um, the ICFEW partnership really um, has put people central addressing community problems related to water and sanitation, related to uh, barriers to family planning, related to food insecurity, um, at the center of, of, the, of our interventions and communities have come to realize that conservation is not only about wildlife, but it's also about solving uh, community problems. And to me, this understanding has really helped uh, communities to buy into the strategies that the partnership uh, is implementing. And I see that in the next, uh, probably those who will be there talking after in the next 50 years, the story will no longer be how people are uh, threatening wildlife, but probably how wildlife has come so much into people and they are living together and maybe how they should kind of, you know, sort of that rough between wildlife and people if we keep this trend because uh, we have demonstrated that Conservation is also about solving problems and making uh, people live in harmony with the wildlife. So to me, that's a very big milestone that this partnership has uh, achieved. Thank you, David. Uh, Giana? So, yeah, maybe I'll jump in. Uh, Rich touched on it when he mentioned the PhD approach. So, uh, you know, for me, that's such a key milestone. Having um, spent some time working with international organizations like IUCN, I was on their council for two terms, uh, et cetera. I know that, you know, a lot of the large organizations in the world are, are very nervous for whatever reasons to even touch the discussions around human population. And yet it's 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 an essential conversation, not just for the conservation aspects, but also again, you know, touching on what you brought up, human culture and human development, community development, etc. Yeah. And a rights-based approach towards at least addressing some of the issues that our communities have about their own sustainability, I think is very courageous. I think it's long overdue. I think we should have as 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 a as a sector globally, we probably should have started this discussion decades ago but uh it's it's something that not many organizations that i've seen um, are willing to to even engage in and it's been it's been a number of world conservation congresses where collectively ourselves icf and other partners have tried to put forward motions and positions on at least having the discussion being held around phe becoming an integrated component towards con uh, conservation and 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 you know those motions were declined in other words there was not even the the strength of of, of or desire to even engage in those conversations so for me I think ICF EWT tackling the, 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 the need to understand and build the capacity in ourselves first to understand PHE and how it works and, and where it can have an impact. And then starting to roll it out and then seeing, I think, 
very importantly, the incredible uptake in those communities um, and the way in which approaching things, you know, small things, like in some of our communities, um, you know, making sure that girl children can go to school by making sure that there's a gender specific bathroom for them and ablutions, et cetera. Uh, and, and, and approaching the, the those conversations around uh, the a rights based approach to one's own body and choosing one family family size, but also securing girl children in school and understanding that that's going to have possibly one of the longest term impacts in, in, in conservation by, by allowing communities to choose their own sustainable path. So, so EWT, I see a partnership, not just by, by pushing the boundaries, but actually implementing it and already seeing the impact. I think is the potential to also start a global dialogue on how you know mainstream conservation needs to start engaging more with the PhD practitioners around the world. And for me, that's perhaps one of the most potentially powerful milestones that we have yet to, to understand the impact because it's still quite new, but perhaps 50 years from now, when the next webinar is being held, looking back would say that was a, a really big turning point, I think. Um, so, so for me, that's really one of the standout impacts and I think we are yet to still see the long-term benefits of it. But for for me, one of the things I'm the most proud of in this partnership. Thank you, Yolan. That's amazing. Um, so many, so many take home points there that are all just absolutely incredible and thought provoking. And um, there's, there's just so much that we can be thankful for this partnership for. Um, Karen, I'd like to ask you for, for your, your feedback. Great. No, thanks. And as I know, we're, we're, we're running short, but I think just very briefly, I think so much has already been covered by, by what um, Mape, Rich, Yolan and Adalbert have already said, but I think, you know, key to this, uh, two, two things very, very briefly, I think it's the, the, the partnerships, not only between the various crane people and crane programs and researchers and organizations across the world, but it is that diversity of partnerships, which I think is just absolutely so, so key. And I do see Kat online from the Margaret Pike Trust, who we're partnering with in this PHE approach and so many others. It's bringing in that diversity of skills and diversity of approaches that really come together and complement what we're doing. Um, and I think that that's just really tra transformational in the conservation sector is, is partnering with, with other organizations that are sometimes not the obvious organizations to partner with. And I think that really strengthens and grows what we are doing. Um, and I think the other thing I just wanna finish with is saying that one thing that I think has transformed the way we actually work in, in the conservation sector is being able to work virtually. It's very much an operational point of, um, from an operational viewpoint, but you know, having access to Teams and Zoom and being able to connect across Africa, all of our teams, not only our teams, but part through to, to partners and actually communicate effectively without having to get on a plane every single time. It's just amazing. It does. It helps us to develop teams, strengthen teams. It helps us to um, share lessons, learn from, from each other, and just helps us to really improve our work so much faster than I, I, I think, and, and our approach is so much faster than it was in the past. So that's from me. Karen, thank you so much. You know, um, there are so many things I want to know, so many other questions, but alas, time has run out. Um, and An hour is not time, nearly enough, is it? It's not enough <laughs> at all. I've just oh, been like nodding and smiling and loving every moment of it. I <laughs> am so, so thankful that I have uh, my peers that are these panelists to learn from and and glean knowledge from um, that I can interpret into our marketing strategies and campaigns. Um, and yeah, so proud, so proud of this partnership. So proud to call you guys my, my colleagues. Uh, thank you for everything and thank you for doing what you do. Um, you know, they, they, there's a saying, one of my favorite sayings that nothing happens before it is time and time is never late. And I think that that saying stands true to as to why ICF and EWT came together 30 years ago to form this partnership had to happen. It was just a match made made to be. So, indeed, indeed, a long lived partnership, just like our crane bonds that we know of. Yes, absolutely. So, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for great discussions. That is wonderful. Ah, oh, and of course. This is not the last webinar. Keep that keep that string going. Those of you that have seen all the webinars up next on July thirteenth, um, 
7 Central, um, we are going to have a talk about our breeding and stopover areas program. The manager, Zhang Qi, will present. She's in our China programs. Conservation of the Western white nape crane population in China. Beautiful, beautiful birds. And that is sponsored by Diane Kirkham Johnson. Thank you so much, Diane, for sponsoring this next webinar. So all of this is made uh, possible for your support. Thank you so much to everyone out there for supporting our work here in Africa and Asia everywhere. Um, please consider supporting our work at those two websites there. Um, and make sure to look at the websites that Hannah has put in the chat to look for our 50th anniversary events that are happening for both the Endangered Wildlife Trust and the International Crane Foundation. Thank you.